discussing about Open Web Application Security Project, otherwise known as OWAPS. So this is the top 10 web vulnerabilities that we can find across all these different sites. So more and more websites now are using web application technology to actually provide information, provide services, and look at even payment systems and so on. So a lot of different kind of versatility that comes along with web application services. As a result of that, we have different kind of attacks that go after many of these sites. So, of course, the first one that you can see over here is injection. How can we inject something into the site that could bypass some of the different security mechanisms and be able to pull out results, drop tables, and so on. So the list goes on. And broken authentication, are we able to try to gain access to the system because they're not able to authenticate us properly or as intended? Can we bypass authentication? Number three is on sensitive data exposure. So again, does it accidentally open up certain directories that would actually allow hackers or users to browse into those directories, pulling out information or data? And of course, we also have XML external entities. When you're putting up different kind of XML technology into the site, does it process it correctly? Is the processor working as intended? Will it actually run certain kind of malicious scripts on it? Number five, on broken access control. Are you managing the accesses to different users, different identities, different roles of how users go into your site? So all this matter in terms of how you're managing the accesses and the control of it. Number six is on security misconfiguration, which is a very big part because as more and more enterprises go into cloud, this is the part that we can actually see that some of these servers or instances are being misconfigured and this allows hackers to actually go directly into the system so maybe they open up secure shell, they open up telnet and there wasn't a ability to stop brute force attack from happening and number seven on cross-site scripting are we able to inject our own scripts into the site changing the behavior of the intended purposes of different parts of the site Number eight, on insecure deserialization. So again, when we upload the data into the system, are we able to change the way it behaves? Number nine, what about components that come alongside with your web application service? If you are using different kind of libraries, different kind of plugins, add-ons to your site, are they vulnerable to different kind of attacks as well? And number 10, how are you logging down what is happening to the site? Did the user fail to authenticate? Did the user actually fail authentication a few times and you manage to access it is the user assessing the system from a different kind of geolocation so all these are things that we have to constantly lock down so that we can perform further analysis onto the site and of course if you go back into the earlier lecture and tutorial we were looking at the web server architecture right so over here we got the on the left side we got all your web browsers so they could be chrome firefox and right at the center, we have all these web server technologies. So it could be your PHP, your ASP, and so on. And on the right side, you've got the databases. So of course, you could have different kind of databases like Microsoft SQL, MySQL, Prosper SQL, or even the newer type like NoSQL on MongoDB and so on. So those are places where we are storing a lot of data. So again, this is the architecture of a web server. And there's a lot of more things that we can do with that. So of course, if you go back to the earlier lecture and tutorial on SQL injection, so this is a very simple way where we are looking at what's happening across the site and we are able to know what kind of injection we can put in and this allow us complete access into the system, all right? So with that, let us go ahead with the first tutorial. So over here, I have OWAMP's Juice Shop. So this allow us an access to a web application server and test out our ability to unlock different parts of the site through SQL injection, through cross-site scripting, and so on. So again, this is the place we're going into to try to find more details. So what we're trying to find here is looking at the search result bar. So this allows us to put in some kind of input. There's also an account and login. So once you're presented with a login page, you're thinking about what kind of database are they using on the back end, and how could you possibly bypass login? So remember earlier in the lecture slide, you could actually see what is happening behind the scene. And of course, you'll be querying into the database, trying to find details and information. And all we got to do is enter a single code to test whether this particular login form is vulnerable to a SQL injection. So we can enter or 
1 equal 1, which means that this complete statement is actually true. And in password, we can just enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, for example. And all we're going to do is go ahead and click login on that. So this would actually allow us access into the system. And the great thing about OOP's Juice Shop is that it will actually inform you when a challenge is complete. So this is allowing you to learn through a scoreboard format to know what kind of levels and challenges there are in order for you to access further into the site. So with that, I hope you learned something really valuable in today's lecture and tutorial. So we will be starting this OWAP's Juice Shop series about web application penetration testing so that you can learn more about cybersecurity. So thank you so much once again for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And I'll try my best to answer any of your queries. So remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.